Okay, close your eyes. Breathe deeply for a bit. And think thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill is a wish for happiness, true happiness. This is why we're meditating. We want to find a happiness that doesn't harm anyone, doesn't harm ourselves, doesn't harm other people. A happiness that lasts. The good thing about this happiness is that it's found inside. It comes from developing your own inner resources, which means it doesn't have to take anything away from anyone else. In fact, the more you're able to find this happiness within you, the more you're able to share with others. So when you wish for your own true happiness, it's not a selfish thought. So you pose that thought in the mind, may I be truly happy. And then spread the same thought to others. Start with people who are close to your heart, and then very gradually work out in ever-widening circles. People you know well and like, people you like even though you don't know them so well, people you're neutral about, and people you don't like. Goodwill doesn't mean you have to like someone. There are a lot of people whose behavior is really not likable at all. But you realize if they could find true happiness, it would be good for them, it would be good for the whole world. So there's no reason to harbor thoughts of ill will for anyone. Spread thoughts of goodwill to people you don't even know, and not just people, living beings of all kinds, east, west, north, south, above and below, out to infinity. May we all find true happiness in our hearts. These thoughts of goodwill. And the word is goodwill. There's a, another word in Pali, bhamma, which means love. But the Buddha is not talking about universal love, it's universal goodwill. Because love, as the Buddha pointed out, is, is unreliable. There are bound to be people you love and people you don't love. And he often talks about how sometimes hatred can be based on love. Some, in other words, someone does something really bad to people you love. And it's hard to love that, that person. Goodwill, however, is more of an attitude, less of an emotion, more of an attitude. Realizing that, as I said, the people who act in harmful ways, if they could realize the harmfulness of their ways and change their ways, they would be better off and everyone else would be better off. So goodwill is something you can spread in, in all directions to all beings both to people you love and like, and also people you don't love and don't like. But goodwill also has to be tempered with equanimity, the, un the understanding that for each of us to find your happiness is going to depend on each of our actions. And who's responsible for his or her actions? Well, that person is responsible. And a lot of people that you cannot make wise and that you cannot help to see the error of their ways. So in cases like that, you have to develop equanimity. Even for yourself, you have to think about all the mistakes you made in the past. You have to have equanimity about those, too. The purpose of this is so you don't waste your time and energy trying to change things you can't change, so that you can focus on the things you can and give them as much energy as possible. It's because of this chastening thought that we have to develop equanimity. Because even though we may have goodwill for all beings, there are only so many people that we can help. We have only so much energy, so much time. So we have to learn how to focus it in the right places, at the right times, so that we'll get the best benefits. This is called bringing wisdom and discernment to your practice of goodwill. So when you can develop these attitudes, that the mind really is ready for meditation, because you realize that, as I said, for each of us to find happiness, it depends on each of us acting in the proper way. And where do our actions come from? They come from the mind. 
And even though we know there's something good down here in the mine, it requires a fair amount of digging. It's like knowing there's gold under your house. You may feel good about it, but if you don't actually dig down and get the gold out, it's not going to do you much good. So when we meditate on the breath, we're actually digging down. Another analogy is the fresh water that's in salt water. You don't have to create fresh water if you've got a big bucket of salt water, but you can't just hope that by letting the bucket sit there, the fresh water is going to separate out. You have to distill it. That's when you get the fresh water that's already there. In the same way, the good qualities of the mind are there. The potential for true happiness, the potential for what the Buddha said or called the deathless. The potential for you to experience a deathless is already there. But you have to work to separate it out. That's why we meditate. So you focus on the breath and develop three qualities. There's mindfulness, alertness, and ardency. Mindfulness means keeping something in mind, like we're keeping the breath in mind right now, remembering to stay with the breath each time it comes in, each time it goes out. Alertness is watching what's actually happening. What is happening with your breath right now? Where do you feel it? Is it coming in? Is it going out? Is your mind with the breath? If it's not with the breath, bring it right back. And then the quality of ardency. In other words, you try to do this skillfully. You try to do it well. If you find that the mind has wandered off, you just drop whatever the distraction is and come right back to the breath. You don't have to complete the thought. Leave it with its edges unwoven, just dangling there. There's no need to complete the thought. Just come right back to the breath as quickly as you can. While you're with the breath, try to be really, really sensitive to it. Does it feel good? Where does it feel good? Where does it not feel good? If it doesn't feel good, you can change. It's this quality of ardency that really brings the wisdom and discernment to the practice. Because otherwise you can keep the breath in mind, you can notice what's happening. But unless there's an element of ardency, it doesn't go anywhere. The ardency is what makes changes happen. In other words, you begin to notice that a way of breathing that you thought was comfortable after a while isn't so comfortable anymore. So what do you do? You use your ingenuity. Figure out, well, how about deeper breathing or more shallow breathing? Fortunately, the options aren't too many and they don't require too much thought. Otherwise, it would really disturb your concentration, disturb the stillness of mind that you're trying to develop. Just keep it on a very basic level. Does the breath feel good? What would feel better? When we talk about the breath, it's a sensation of energy flowing in the body. So it's not just at the nose or in the lungs that you feel the breath. You can feel it anywhere in the body at all, because there's an energy that flows through the nervous system each time you breathe in, each time you breathe out. And if you notice there's any tension or tightness in any part of the body, you can allow it to relax. and to stay relaxed all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. You can go through the body, survey it section by section. If you want to be systematic, start down at the navel, then move up the front of the body, up through the head, and then down the back, out through the legs, then starting at the back of the neck again, going down the arms. And just notice that if there's any pattern of tension that builds up, say, as you breathe in, or if you're holding on to any tension as you breathe out. And if you find that that's the case, just think of it relaxing and staying relaxed all the way through the breath cycle. These are the qualities that help the mind to settle down. And it is a skill. It's going to take time. And it takes practice and more practice. But it's a skill worth developing. Because if we don't train the mind, the, the most important part of our lives is out of control. It's like handing the keys to your car over to a crazy person. They can take the car and you know, have no idea where they're going to drive it, who they're going to run into, what they're going to run into, what's going to happen to the car. And it's the same with our life. If our mind is not trained, it can make us do all kinds of crazy things. 
So here's a simple exercise to develop three really important qualities of mind, mindfulness, alertness, and ardency, that are useful not only in the meditation, but, in, but also in all your activities. I was reading once about a pianist talking about playing the piano and what it's like. He says you have to be aware of the past and the present and the future all at once. In other words, the past you have to remember not only what your plans were for playing the piece, but also you have to remember how you've been phrasing it up to that point. Right in the present you have to be alert to how you're playing, how it fits in with what you were planning. And as for the future, you have to have a sense of where it's going, where you want it to go. It's the same three qualities that we develop as we meditate. You keep the lessons that you've learned about meditation in mind. That's remembering the past. You've watched the present moment to see what decisions you're making, whether they're wise or not, whether they're in line with what you had planned or not. And you have a sense of where you want this to go. You want it to go in a more and more skillful direction. So even though we're focused on the present moment, it does relate to the past and it does relate to the future. So try to make it relate to these things in a way that goes in the right direction. So you become more sensitive to what's going on in the mind. That sensitivity is the basis of discernment, allowing you to see what's really going on, what's causing unnecessary stress, and how you can put an end to that unnecessary stress by changing your ways. And this is how the meditation connects with that original motivation. We are trying to find true happiness. And it does require that we make some changes. Fortunately, they're changes we can make. They lie within our power. So focus your energy in an area that does respond to your energy. And you'll be amazed at how many changes it can make, not only in you, but also in your environment, the people around you, the things around you. The general direction of your life will go closer to where you really want it to go. And if you dig down deep enough in the mind, you'll find something that totally unexpected. a happiness and a well-being that, kind of, that excels anything you can think about. And when you found that, you've succeeded in showing genuine goodwill for yourself and for all beings.